All right, I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to catch Ultra Beasts in Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, but this guide is meant to make things a little easier on your journey, such as, did you know you can go to the Aether Foundation and buy Beast Balls? Talk to this receptionist right here, and it's a little shop for Beast Balls. Now, they're only 1,000 Poke Dollars each, which is a lot cheaper than the millions that they cost in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Also, it is nice you can buy them just straight up. Now, you can only buy them in either 1 or 10 batches, so it's not like you can just go 99, spend your entire bank, and then have a ton of Beast Balls, but it is much better than the Looker exploit of putting your Pokeballs on Pokemon, putting them in the PC, that we have none of them in your party, and then Looker keeps giving you Beast Balls. It's a lot slower that way, but like now you just get to buy 10 of them at a time. So, a little frustrating, but hey, it's a pretty good deal. Now, because you can keep uh, resetting for an infinite amount of Ultra Beasts, so there's no limit on how many you can catch, I just recommend grabbing like 30 at a time or something. Whenever you run out or run low, just come back here, it's not too far away. Then you can hop right into a portal and start catching Ultra Beasts once again. Now, the locations of all the Ultra Beasts aren't really a mystery. If you want Stack Attacka or Blacephalon, you'll be asked to go to Pony Grove during the post game after you've become champion, and then there's just a chance you can encounter it. Now, it is going to be like a special encounter, so there's just a chance you get a normal Pokemon. Oh, sweet! Zora, I might, I might just catch that just to catch it. But then all you have to do is wander around, and then Stack Attacka or Blacephalon may appear. Stack Attacka in Pokemon Ultra Moon, and then Blacephalon in Pokemon Ultra Sun. Now, the exclusive Pokemon or the exclusive Ultra Beasts from Pokemon Sun and Moon do remain, so you can catch certain ones in Pokemon Sun, po certain ones in Pokemon Moon, and that's going to be at the Altar of the Moon or the Altar of the Sun by using the Ultra Warp Ride. Now, here's the thing about Ultra Beasts. Even though they seem all special and you have to do all these crazy things to get them, you just you just gotta treat them like normal Pokemon captures. And also you have to be good at the Ultra Warp Ride because it isn't really super common for a white portal to appear. And those are the only ones that all the Ultra Beasts will appear in. And then after that, it just boils down to rarity. You have uh, the common ones such as Nile Ego, Buzzswole, and Veramosa. Uncommon with Zerkatry, Kartana, and Celesteela. And then the rarest one being Guzzlord. So you just kinda have to like go through it. And then all the portal rules still apply as well. One ring is gonna be slightly more rare. Two rings for the more uh, rare Pokemon than that and I've gone into a glowing legendary Ultra Beast portal I was expecting the Pokemon to be shiny or something but nah you don't even get that it was a uh, Celesteela so it also doesn't even guarantee that it will be a Guzzlord as well and as you can see the uh, white portals aren't really super common so you do have to be pretty decent at the uh, Ultra Warp Ride and then just hope that you can uh, make it in while also not being terrible. Uh, some of the other rules do apply as well, like I was saying, that you just treat it like a normal Pokemon capture, except they do have some pretty insane stats. So try to bring a good ally Pokemon that'll help you catch these Ultra Beasts, depending on which one you are trying to target. Um, also, they can be shiny. So finally, the shiny lock on Ultra Beasts has been lifted in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and that just means that you get to soft reset in front of the Ultra Beast and have one in 4,000 odds. So if you get a shiny charm, it's gonna make it a little easier to get the shiny Ultra Beast. You can also use the, uh, oh, that's not good right there. You can also go and use um, Synchronize. So by using Synchronize, you can kind of have a better chance at getting the nature of the Ultra Beast that you're looking for, which could help out if you're going for shiny or anything like that, or just making a competitive Ultra Beast. They are encountered at level 60, so it's not too much work to hyper train them. Uh, Beast Balls do increase the capture rate qu quite a lot, and then overall just get a strong catching Pokemon. And finally, so near the end, let's see how many light years we had to travel, because sometimes your first portal that you see could be an Ultra Beast portal, and other times you could have to go thousands of light years away. So there's our Ultra Plant, that's where we find Zerkatry. And it's not really too difficult to figure out which Pokemon is where. Zerkatry is pretty crazy. Like, just look at all the wild Zerkatry out there, and we are ready to ca catch one of them. So yeah, pretty much you just have to treat it like a standard Pokemon battle that has, like, special encounter requirements. Like, okay, you go through the wormhole, and then you're good to go. Other than that, you can still synchronize it. You can still do all kinds of fun stuff, like status it to make it easier to capture. Bring a high-level Pokemon. So I brought level 100 Aegislash. Gonna false swipe the Zerkatry down to do as much damage as possible. Probably not the best idea, though, because... Nah, I'm in blade form, I'm going to take a lot of damage. So that's kind of it. Uh, Zerkatry setting the electric terrain could get a little dangerous, but it, but you do have the Beast Ball. So pretty much the Beast Ball against Ultra Beast is going to multiply your capture rate by five. So even though the capture rates for these Pokemon are kind of screwy, you're still going to be all right. So my Age of Slash faints, but if you just bring items, you'll be okay. You can synchronize it. You can go for hyper training. You can soft reset for shiny. There's, there's a lot of opportunity here when doing this. Also, I have a Lunalis. So if I want to, I could use a Hypnosis. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. You get them to a low hit points, and then the Beast Ball is going to make it an easy capture. Now, you do have to deal with some strength as well. Like, as you can see, it gets a boost. So, plus three on the special attack. These Pokemon do not mess around. So, because of that, you know you can either spam Beast Balls and revives and just pray, which is an option. But right now, we're dealing with, a, with an Electric Terrain 
2.5 times Zerka Tree. So that means you could also bring other Pokemon to respond to the Pokemon that you're going to be battling. So Ground type Pokemon, Lightning Rod, Volt Absorb will make it easier against Zerka Tree. You can also start the move sets of the other Pokemon that you're encountering, then make it easier, like a Steel type against Nialigo. That's going to go pretty well. As we can see right here, though, one hit points, not super hard, and then we just have a ton of Beast Balls now. So let's go and use some of them. I'm expecting this to, to not give us too many problems, and we'll go and check out the catch rates of these Pokemon once we have caught it. And done. GG easy. So, it, it just puts up a front of a lot of power and a lot of, like, weirdness. But again, at the end of the day, it's a simple Pokemon catch that it rewards you with a pretty ridiculous Pokemon. You can also just keep going through the Ultra Wormholes and catch as many of them as you want. A competitive Ultra Beast, or at least a competitive nature Ultra Beast, is going to be really good for trading for a lot of other Pokemon. So if you're not like the best breeder or you don't want to go through that, you just grind the Ultra Wormholes and then use that to trade for competitive other Pokemon that could also be set up. Because what you could do, level it to level 100, hyper train it, and then trade it for a perfect Pokemon in return. So that's that. there's like a nice little economy that can be made made with these ultra beasts right here now as for the capture rates now i feel like the capture rates are kind of all over the place just because of the way the storyline plays out in pokemon ultra sun ultra moon that pheromosa you have to encounter four of them in pokemon ultra moon and then with kartana you have to encounter the four of them in pokemon ultra sun so pretty much just throwing a beast ball at 255 capture rate pokemon is going to be an instant capture now while we don't have the full updated numbers at this time for pokemon ultra sun and ultra moon i'm guessing that's just going to be the other rates that's a capture rate of 25 for celesteela because you're only encountering two of them and then it's also going to be a capture rate of 25 for the Buzzwool. And then Naligo is also going to be a capture rate of 45, while we have Zerkatree at a capture rate of 30. But as you can see, one hit points, Beast Ball, really doesn't make it matter too much. And then Guzzlord is going to be 15. So pretty much the rarer the Pokemon get, the harder they are to capture. I'm just guessing that Buzzwool, Pheromosa, Celesteela, and Kartana are all going to be around 25 capture rate. They're just going to be dangerously powerful, you know? Make sure you status them early. Make sure you just kind of get a little bit of damage before they start, like, trying to snowball through your team. And then after that, what you can do is just throw a Beast Ball. And you should be pretty safe from there. You can always save before the encounter, so if something goes wrong, you know how to adapt and then end up catching the Pokemon off of that. And then the exclusives are going to be, as I just said, Kartana and Ultra Sun. And then we're going to have Buzzwall and Ultra Sun. Then we have Pheromosa and Celesteela and Pokemon Ultra Moon. And I think that's pretty much going to be all there is to it. You know, it's really fun to just go through the Ultra Space, encounter the different uh, terrains, the different Ultra Beasts, and then catch them for yourselves. Like I said, you can do it competitively, and everything should be good to go. And then lastly, to just so show off another Ultra Space, how easy it is and how random it can be. So this is going to be the Ultra Desert. This is where you encounter the Pheromosa. But I found this in the second Warpool. So we can go and head into this and then catch ourselves a Pheromosa pretty quickly. Also, it might be an interesting way of testing the capture rate. So yeah, 724, not even a thousand light years. And we were able to encounter an Ultra Beast. So that's pretty much going to be how this plays out. Oh no, how do we how do we make it around this? If only we had a Pokemon that we could call, like the Mudsdale. So yeah, sometimes you might see like a little bit of something that gets in your way. But overall, it's going to be a fairly linear shot through here. Oh no, how do we push these rocks over? Yeah, see, it's, it's kind of funny because the Zerka tree doesn't really take any effort. However, the Pheromosa, you kind of have to, kind of have to solve a little bit of a puzzle. All right, so I'm just going to throw the Beast Ball at the uh, Pheromosa. If it ends up failing, that means we know it's like a 25 catch rate. But if it doesn't fail, then that means we're either getting good odds or it, it's that easy. So I'm going to soft reset just to make sure. And by doing that, we can kind of get an idea as to what's going on. That would be kind of interesting if they kept the exclusive catch rates the same for Pokemon Sun Moon to Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. It wouldn't be the most unheard of thing. But like I said, it would be it would be pretty interesting. So right here, uh, you just got to Machamp shove your way through it and then use a little bit of Mudsdale Gallop. You should be good to go. I'm going to try to catch this Pheromosa like a couple times and then I'll get a, I'll get a conclusive idea. Alright, so I just threw a Beast Ball and Pheromosa did break out. So that means I might have been lucky on that first capture. I'm just going to keep throwing Beast Balls until I capture it. Which is also another method that you can use. Just bring a really tanky high level Pokemon, eat up all the hits and then heal it as needed. And then you don't really need to weaken a an Ultra Beast in a lot of situations. Like maybe the Guzzlord because it does have such a low catch rate. But when you're just getting the free times 5... It's not really too difficult to go and catch the Ultra Beast. And then I wanted to go and catch one more because it is really fun. And again, it could go by pretty quick or it could take a little bit of time. But I think this is a great way to capture Ultra Beasts, honestly. It's a nice little mini game. It doesn't make them super free, but also doesn't make them too challenging. You know, if you just want to get a competitive Ultra Beast, a little bit of work. That's all that there really is to it. And I didn't even have to go that far for that one either. 
So it is pretty good. I also think it's a lot better than just if they had like an infinite amount of Zerka tree that could be captured or something. Like, oh, you just have to keep doing it like the Blacephalon. You run into the grass. So yeah, after that, I just want to like spam Beast Balls at this thing. See what happens if you don't try to weaken it. It might be slower. It might be faster. It's mostly just RNG. But yeah, it seems like the Zerka tree is a little tricky to catch. Maybe, maybe the actual odds of uh, catching it are slightly lower, like slightly reduced from Pokemon Sun and Moon. And it does a lot of damage. That's a shield form. 40 level higher Aegislash, and the Electric Terrain Beast Boost, the Zerga Tree is just kind of shredding through me. So it is something to consider that you might want to pay attention to how much damage Pokemon's doing, and just kind of be ready for it. Again, Ground-type Pokemon going to be very successful against Zerga Tree, anything that can just stop out those Electric types. And it looks like, after a couple of attempts, free low. So yeah, you just have a fainted synchronized Pokemon, and also since there, since there are going to be five uh, Ultra Beasts inside of your game, just bring a synchronized for all of them. Uh, maybe have them fainted, maybe not, because if they aren't fainted, then that means you actually do have the opportunity to, um, just throw the Beast Ball, the, uh, synchronized Pokemon gets knocked out, but then that means you have, like, extra revive fodder, that at the end of the battle you can revive them if you need to, and then you still have opportunities to catch and whatever, so just bring, just bring a synchronized Pokemon for any possible Ultra Beast you can encounter, should be good to go. So if you guys enjoy the video, that's an Ultra Beast guide for Pokemon Ultra Sun Moon, I hope you all have a nice day, thank you very much for watching.